Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube and uh, this is a pretty cool easy problem called single number. Uh, just because this one solution is cool I thought. Um, it says given a non-empty array of integers, so an array of integers, uh, every element appears twice except for one, find the single one. Your algorithm should have linear runtime complexity. Could you implement it without extra memory? Okay, so my first instinct was, okay, we just need the frequency of the number to be one. Obviously, there's a hash map, right? So we just have number frequencies, loop through, basic loop. If the uh, hash map doesn't contain the value, we put it in with a, you know, the count of one. Otherwise, we update the value, and then we have, this is basically a frequency map. Then you just loop through the frequency map. If the frequency is one, we return the key. So then that's it. That's it. You run it. It works perfectly. But what they wanted in the problem was um, to not use extra space, right? So how do we do that? Well, I looked at the solution, and I'm not really that confident in my bit manipulation abilities. I learned bit manipulation in data structures, but I have to know it to get a job probably, so I'm going to get better at it. But I, you can bit manipulation is useful. I just uh, saw this solution. You just loop through the array. And I was surprised by how simple it was, and then I looked it up and it had it explained to me, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, so I guess you can do, um, you know, like plus equals, but like caret equals with these. I'm not sure if you can do it in Java. The solution he had was in Python, so let's try it. Um, and then I'll explain it. So this one is a linear scan, and obviously we don't have storage space. We're just doing bit manipulation. So looks like it works. You can do this which again just means result equals results um, caret nums of i. Um, so yeah, pretty fast, 100%. Um, how does this work? Okay, so the this caret symbol in when we're doing bit manipulation, this means XOR. And bit manipulation is breaking things down to the lowest, not the, lo the lowest level, but a very low level where we're thinking of numbers as bits, meaning a zero or a one. Um, you know, the binary representation of an integer value, for example, I think it's 32 bits in, um, you know, Java. In different programming language, it's more more or less bits. Um, so we have this list operation is one, hash table, I showed, we already went through that. This is like some math thing that we didn't do because it, it seems kind of dumb. And then we have bit manipulation, right? And this is what his example was. And I was like, how does this work? How, how is this working? And, you know, there's a pretty good explanation here. It says, if we take XOR of a value, and remember, we only want every, elements all occur more than once, except for one. One element occurs once. So I was like, how is this working? Like, I don't really understand. Well, if we have this element set to zero, we have this um, initial result set to zero, and any element that we see XOR, meaning this caret, if we XOR with zero, um, it re result will then be set to the element that we did an XOR with, right? So if we're looping through the array, an array of integers like 2, 2, 1, and we do 0 XOR 2 on our first loop, then result will end up being 2, right? And I'm going to use Python to kind of sh uh, show my point here in a second. But... Um, you know, when we do, we result will be two after we do result XOR two because zero XOR two is two. Um, but now that result is two, we see another two. Two XOR two is zero. So any duplicate, the way that XOR works is any duplicate number, when you XOR it the first time, the result will change to something different that we don't want. But when you XOR with the same number again, because there's all these duplicates, then it's just going to go back to the original number. So the only time that XOR will change from zero to a number that we want is when we find the single number with no duplicates. All of these are duplicates except for one. So right, if we, let's say for example, we do one XOR nine. Well, that's going to change to eight. But if we now do eight XOR one, that's going to be nine. And if we did eight XOR nine, that's going to be one. So you could see how it's kind of, it goes back and forth. So when we see duplicates, we're doing zero XOR two. Well, that changes it to two because zero XOR with anything is going to be two or whatever that value is. 
But then we see it again, and it's just going to be 2xor2, two, and it just goes back to 0. So as you can see, when we see duplicates and we do the same computation using xor at the bit level, it's just going to turn things, change things one way and change things back. Since everything's a duplicate, we're just changing things one way and changing things back. And when we see the only single element, it changes things one way to the element that we actually want. So when we see this one at the end, we're doing, we're back at zero. We do zero x or one, and it's going to stay that way. We're not doing one x or one because there's no more ones. It's there's no duplicates. Hopefully, I explained that well. I know it's it's kind of a hard one to explain. Uh, I definitely recommend reading more about it because I'm still like le in the learning process. It's kind of a harder, I think it's one of the harder concepts, like really getting bit manipulation down because there's a lot of trick solutions with bit, bit manipulation. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I'm stupid or not uh, in the comments below. I really appreciate knowing how stupid I am. So just let me know. Um, and please, you know, uh, check out the other videos. So thanks guys for watching and see you guys next time.